You guys did this in your garage. Yep, garage built. Well, we walked from one V8 Comanche and happened to come by this Jeep and uh, his girlfriend, McKenna, right? Hi, Trevor. Nice to meet you. Um, I mean, I guess it's LS the world, right? So leave that one, come by this one. Before we talk about the Jeep, just show us what's under the hood. Yeah. What do you got going underneath here? LQ4. Uh, truck stock, it, truck stock engine. Internals. Yes. Yep. Yep. Pretty much stock accessory drives to a bunch of ICT billet brackets, but mostly... Uh, Mostly truck spacing, relocated the alternator up here. You got a new throttle body, it looks mm -hmm. like. Yeah, drive by cable. Okay. Got rid of the drive by wire. Oh, it that easier. just converted it back to drive by yeah, cable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, looks like you have a full shroud electric fan as well. Um, I do. It's actually just an OEM TJ radiator, but it's yeah. like a race TJ from Black Horse Racing. Uh huh. Um, and it's been killer. It keeps it 185. So they made the radiator narrower for people that had a factory steering box. Uh, which just looking down, you have full hydro, so you're mm -hmm. giving up a little bit of space over here, mm -hmm. but it seems to stay cool fine, right? Because with does, the shroud yeah. and that it's, fan. It's slightly thicker, yeah. The fan's still uh, 19 inches. And this is fairly new, right? It is, maybe six, eight months. And uh, you guys did this in your garage? Yep, garage built. You have a 4L80 transmission, right? I do. Uh, to an Atlas? Yes. And is the 4L80 still being operated by the GM computer? Um, no, so all of my stuff is Holly. It's the Holly so, Terminator okay. X. Okay, That's you got Max. Terminator X, 480 tied in, all your tuning goes through there. Um, and that's what also allowed you to go back to the drive-by cable. Yes, uh, yeah, as an selectable option. in the Holly, uh, Holly kit. Gotcha. Basically a big uh, upgrade from that 4.0, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah just, uh, just a couple of years. So besides the engine, looking around this thing, so definitely stretch TJ. Do you know what your wheelbase is on I'm this? I'm at 108. About 108, yep. okay. And then uh, I'm noticing Sterling rear and Super Duty 60 front. So Super Duties are the thing now. Mm -hmm. We get them for a real affordable price and build them up. Um, and this thing sits pretty low. Highline fenders, cut the factory hood. Uh, but I noticed something here. What's going on with the front of the frame? So it's a Motobuilt front kit. Okay. And buddy of mine. So from, from right here. Correct. Uh, buddy of mine from Colorado did these custom fenders, custom grill hoop, a uh, little bull bar that ties into which the ties boat sides. Which ties into your boat had. sides, it's going into the body, which is going in the frame. So this yes. entire rig is rigid. It's pretty much a unibody. Yeah, yeah yes. no rubber motor mounts, same or everything no, tied no together. No body mounts at all. Yep. Um, and so you got high pinion 60 here. Mm -hmm. uh, PSC full hydro, obviously, really nice um, full hydro skid here. Yep. Artec truss, the Artec steering. Um, what do you got going here? Uh, ball joint eliminators. Ball joint eliminators, yep. Uh, and these look like 12 inch travel shocks, maybe? Uh, 14, all 14s. Four corners. Oh, yep. All the way around 14s, mm -hmm. huh? Okay, rad flows with rad flow air bumps. Rad flow bumps. So, I mean, it's really key to front half the front frame section to make all this work. Yeah, well, so I, I rolled it out here a couple years ago and I bent the, the stock kind of tube frame that I originally did with the one tons. And after about another eight months of wheeling on that, I could grab one fender and wiggle the whole front clip. So I figured it was time to make kind of kind of juggy it in, out a little bit. And as, as a Jeep owner myself, and uh, I got a CJ, you know, hitting whoops, flexing out in the rocks, they're constantly creaking and popping and squeaking and everything shifting and moving. Yes. There's just too much flex in the chassis. So you went the full extreme. This is a absolute rigid chassis, you know, somewhat like a race car in a sense. You know? uh, almost, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very much. Um, so as we move to the back here, see so you got aluminum links. I'm sure those are probably from uh, wide open designs, probably. Wide open designs, summit joints. Yep. And then boat size, as you said. Yep, custom now, boat sides. Stretched rear. So what are those wheels? Dirty Life race wheels. Dirty Life race wheels, bead locks with uh, some old school crawlers. Oh, yeah. Those are 39s, reds. right? 39 reds, yep. 39 reds, yep. Uh, they look like they're just getting to that stage where they they're really just work. Just getting good. Yeah. They're just getting good and, and wrinkled. Absolutely. So coilover sunk into the frame. 14s again. Air bumps. 
I assume that's probably the small Genrite rear tank. It is, just the 15 gallon. The 15 yeah. gallon, yep. yep. Now, OEM replacement. believe it or not, the LS probably gets better mileage than the 4.0. <laughs> you know, it's real close. Everybody goes, oh, you put the V8, but the 4.0, you had to be on it all the time, right? Yeah, yeah, it was pretty gutless, so it's 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 kind of trade-off. So tell us what you got going inside here, because this is where it gets even better. So the Genrite dash, I did a little modifications, kind of custom stuff, because obviously my cage is custom. It's not the Genrite cage, so I had to do a little, a little cutting and chopping to make it fit, but it was pretty seamless given the amount of time we had for the one ton or for the LS swap. And you gutted the steering column, quick release steering wheel, um, seats. PRP seats are mounted on internal bars that go right to your roll cage. So Correct. you're basically a full chassis like race car, you know, yeah, safety yeah. So, is there. So the, the cage goes down to my boat side bars actually. So boat awesome. side cage is all custom tied into the frame, which is so makes it unibody. Genrite dash, you ended up using Switch Pros, right? For, for uh... Yeah, so I got two aux beams up there. I have the Holly dash for my gauges. Uh -huh. Up here is just a fuel a secondary manual oil sensor and um, a manual trans temp sensor. We've had quite a people complaining that the having the gauges on your Holly, like you can't see them good. Sometimes it blips in and out and you really don't know what's going on with your engine. So having those, yeah. you know, it's nice to have a water temp, oil temp. Just in case anything weird goes on with the electrical, we at least have a couple important manual ones yeah. still working. Yes, your, your, exactly. tip, your typical uh, gated shifter there for the 4L80. <laughs> Sidewinder. Yeah, um, winter shifter. Cutting brake right yep. there. Uh, that's what I was wondering. So Atlas twin stick, but you have a cutting brake, yeah, huh? Wood, and that's wood cutting brake goes to the rear. It goes to the rear calipers. Do you actually use it? I do. I love it. So it's pretty sick. If you're using a cutting brake, that means that you probably don't have spools in this. I have an ARB selectable in the rear. Very nice. In the fronts of Detroit. Very nice. You know, that is actually one of my favorite setups is to have the auto locker like a Detroit in yes, the front and the ARB yes, in the rear because the, rear. the drivability on the road if you have to go on the road or even just around all these trails, it doesn't push, it doesn't uh, you know, lead you where you don't want to go. Yeah. And everybody says, well, you can't steer with a Detroit in the front. Well, when the rear is unlocked, you do not even feel that it has a Detroit yeah, in the front. Yeah, and, and I built this in Washington, so I'm from the PNW originally, and all the trails up there are tight. Know, we're going around trees, trees tree you, stumps. You have to maneuver, but yeah. the front has to pull up the roots and stuff too. So yeah, so it was it was no question. A lot of people question why, because they, they say, well, Detroit the rear and selectable the front. Absolutely not. You know, with 80% of yeah. your push going uphill coming from the rear, it puts you in a straight line and it doesn't allow you to maneuver. So yeah. I actually really like the fact that it's got ARB in the rear and a yeah, Detroit yeah. in the front. And my, my very first test run in this thing two years ago after the one ton swap was uh, We Rock in Goldendale. Oh, nice. And so a uh, selectable in the rear was also very to get, helpful. Uh, yeah, otherwise you're backing yeah. out, backing no, out, backing any, out. No, any rock crawling comp, it's, it's hugely advantageous to have a selectable so in the rear. So I noticed you have the, the 450 shafts in the front, the big U-joints, the rear axle shaft stock in the Sterling. Mm -hmm. Still haven't broken one, right? Uh, I mean, don't look too close, but this spindle's bent a little bit, but it still works, so I haven't yeah. taken it out. Full floater. Will, I'm, I'm not going to take yeah. it out when I don't know if it'll go back in. It, uh, all, all my Yukon gears are warranted lifetime anyway, so I'm going to run it while it runs. Full hydro. Uh, you know, you can't really drive it around on the road comfortably, I, but do yeah, you drive it? I get 50, 55, 60 max. Like, it, I'll cruise around uh, St. George, around Moab. Do you, you know. wish that you would have put a box in it to drive it, you know, when you're home and around I, Vegas? I miss the drivability of it, but I do not regret going full high. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to have issues Yeah, because, I mean, like I said, it'll go 55, you know. I mean, we're going to RubeCon, Fort Ice. It, that'll be plenty to, to get me from the end of the trail back to the beginning to my truck and trailer. Gotcha. So. Still got um, the soft top, which is nice here at the Hammers. Hard doors roll up the yeah, windows, soft top. Yeah, so I uh, I just welded a couple of brackets on the B-pillar. Tailgate conversion. The, yep, out of yep. hand fab. Yep, uh, brackets on the B-pillar for what? Yep, yep. Oh, for oh the, to get the for soft the, top to fit. For the, yeah, yeah, for gotcha. the and then, soft top hardware stuff. And then you have the factory plastic surrounds up there. Yep, still yeah, fits. That yeah. is awesome. And then uh, looks like the fenders have been kind of smoothed back in, keep as much du yep. dust and dirt out from there. Um, but uh, all in all, just a very functional, nice wheeling Jeep. No spare tire. Nah, it's on yeah. the trailer. Trail, tra yeah. <laughs> Tow it here, plug the tire, keep driving if it goes yeah. flat. Um, well, 
McKenna, right? Yes, sir. Thank you very much for showing me your rig. And uh, you. all you young ladies out there that think that you can't build a rig or be a part of it, she knew more than I did talking about stuff. So uh, uh, they got something to look up to. They better get on their game. <laughs>